opening up this weekend of, of spectacular events commemorating the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Marshall. Director Kevin Lyons has done a great job in selecting a variety of works that include Civil War melodies, and we thank him for all the hard work he does. For an appropriate uh, opener for this morning's concert, Claudio Graffala's March, Washington Grays, written in 1861, the year the Civil War began. Washington Grays is a March masterpiece, a great way to kick off this great weekend. Joseph Selby. Shelby, a Confederate plantation owner from Waverly, Missouri, got involved in the bleeding Kansas border wars prior to the official outbreak of the Civil War. But unlike most of the commanders on both sides, he did not have a military education or training. He was, however, passionate, courageous, and charismatic, and he ended up rising to the rank of general, becoming perhaps the best cavalry commander west of the Mississippi. More on the Battle of Marshall a bit later in the concert. Now we move to a piece that features songs that were used by both sides in the Civil War, Claire Grunman's classic, The Blue and the Gray. It's a patriotic suite that was written for the 1961 centennial observation of the Civil War. In fact, the piece is subtitled, Civil War Suite. Claire Grunman's The Blue. so his Iron Brigade was largely made up of mid-Missourians that he knew. They were an elite, hard-riding force. 
Shelby had participated in a couple of cavalry raids earlier in the war, including one led by General John Sappington Marmaduke of Arrow Rock, who became governor of the state following the war. And most of these raids were not very successful. Marmaduke took too many men who were poorly armed, poorly trained, and of dubious loyal loyalty. He loaded himself down with too many supplies also. Shelby opted for dependable, experienced soldiers and traveled light. His troops overwhelmed one Union garrison after another as they moved north, not only on an attempt to neutralize federal control over those areas, but also to supply his own troops with the needs they, they, had, they had for their raids. Our next piece we want to do is a tribute to our state, the state of Missouri, and it's the Missouri Waltz by Frederick Logan. Our state played a significant role in the Civil War. Missouri was a border state that sent men, armies, generals, and supplies to both of the opposing sides, had stars on both flags, had separate governments representing each side, and endured a neighbor against neighbor intrastate war within the larger national war. By the end of the Civil War, Missouri had supplied nearly 110,000 troops to the Union and about 40,000 troops to the Confederate Army. There were battles and skirmishes in all areas of the state, from the Iowa and Illinois border in the northeast to the edge of the state in the southeast and southwest on the Arkansas border. Counting minor engagements, actions, and skirmishes, Missouri saw over 1,200 distinct fights. Only Virginia and Tennessee exceeded Missouri in the number of clashes within the state boundaries. Now the band will pay a tribute to this state by performing this official song, The Missouri Waltz. Spectators might want to keep a wary eye on the parade with so many Confederate and Union troops in the same place. We don't really know what might happen, but it might just happen right over here, by the way. And so, <laughs> if, if you want to see what might happen, the best place to get on, our uh, little bird tells me, is on the other side of the cones. If, right, those cones are there to, so you can get up and see what's going on. So get on, on the other side of them. They say on the north side of this square would be the best place to see what might happen. Okay? And if you survive all that, buses will be leaving from, uh, from Court Street and English Street, just a block west of here, to take people to Indian Foothills Park, where there will be soldier camp tours, a battle recreation at 2 p.m., Santa Fe Trail Days, food and craft vendors, activities for kids, and more Civil War era music there. Uh, and buses are the, you know, you cannot drive out there is what I'm trying to say. There will be locations to take you right from here if you want to go from just a block or so away. You can also get on buses at uh, the old Walmart parking lot, Marshall High School, the Saline County Fairgrounds, and Saline County Career Center. And the buses will take you out all day and bring you back all day long. So uh, go out and enjoy the soldier camps, the battle recreation at 2, the food and activities and the music out there uh, at the, at the uh, park. Next up, we have a Shokin Farewell by Jay Unger, uh, featuring a narration of a letter written by a Union soldier to his wife on the eve of the Battle of Bull Run. The letter is particularly touching, and we think you'll enjoy this personal touch of the personal glimpse of the Civil War life. A Shokin Farewell by Jay Unger. July 14th, 1861, Washington, D.C. Dear Sarah, the indications are very strong that we shall move in a few days, perhaps tomorrow. Unless I should not be able to write you again, I feel impelled to write a few lines that may fall under your eye when I'm no more. I have no misgivings about or lack of confidence in the cause in which I am engaged, and my courage does not halt or falter. I know how American civilization now leans upon the triumph of the government, and how great a debt we owe to those who went before us through the blood and suffering of the revolution. And I am willing, perfectly willing, to lay down all my joys in this life to help maintain this government and to pay that debt. Sarah, my love for you is deathless. It seems to bind me with mighty cables that nothing but omnipotence can break. 
and yet my love of country comes over me like a strong wind and bears me irresistibly with all those chains to the battlefield. The memory of all the blissful moments I've enjoyed with you come crowding over me, and I feel most deeply grateful to God in you that I've enjoyed them for so long, and how hard it is for me to give them up and burn to ashes the hopes of future years, when God willing we might still have lived and loved together and see our boys growing up to honorable manhood around us. Turn, my dear Sarah. Never forget how much I loved you, or that when my last breath escapes me on the battlefield, it will whisper your name. Forgive my many faults and the many pains I've caused you, how thoughtless and how foolish I've sometimes been. But oh Sarah, if the dead can come back to this earth and flip unseen around those they love, I shall always be with you in the brightest day, in the darkest night, always. your cheek, it shall be my breath, or the cool air your throbbing temple, it shall be my spirit passing by. Sarah, do not mourn me dead, think I am gone and wait for me, for we shall meet again. Sullivan Ballou was killed a week later at the first battle of the world. Sorrows, sacrifices, and challenges the community's ancestors, ancestors endured during the nation's no, most traumatic period, and to mark the occasion of the 150th anniversary of Marshall's most historically significant event of that period, the Battle of Marshall. And whereas the engagement was significant in that it did mark the turning point of then Colonel Joseph Shelby's great raid into Missouri. Whereas it is the duty and privilege of every community to tell the stories of local history and to educate itself and the world and the rest of the world about people and events that shape its identity. And whereas the people of Marshall and Saline County have with generosity, hard work, and ingenuity, ingenuity conducted a year-long commemoration which culminates this weekend. Now therefore be it resolved that we the members of the Missouri House of Representatives 97th General Assembly joined to recognize these efforts and the role they play in contributing not only to local understanding of the, our local history, but, but to the part this history plays in the grand mosaic of state and national history. Speaking of being proud of the work that's been done, we're ever thankful for the many freedoms that we enjoy in our beloved homeland, especially the uh, today in particular, the Freedom of Assembly, which allows us to gather here and at multiple other sites to commemorate some of our town's history over the course of this weekend. We've heard it said that freedom isn't free, so Kevin Lyons has selected a patriotic closer that pays tribute to those brave and willing men and women who, both at home and abroad, have helped to ensure those freedoms. The band will perform Robert Loudon's Armed Forces Salute, a piece that gives us an opportunity to honor men and women who have served or are serving in the U.S. military, the Army, Coast Guard, Marines, Air Force, and Navy, including, of course, the Air and Army National Guard. So veterans, we ask that you stand as we announce your song during Armed Forces Salute by Robert Loudon. With our signature song, Abe Holtzman's Uncle Sammy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
behalf of the Marshall Municipal Band and your director, Mr. Kevin Lyons, I'm Randy Shannon saying we hope that you enjoy your, your festivities this weekend for the Santa Fe Trail Days and the Battle of Marshall. Until next time, good night, or good day, and good day.